Bhagavi Gaurachandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha All glories to Sri Guru and Kauranga. So this is part two of the Safala Ikadashi discussion. We left off here. O lion among kings, please hear the glorious history of this Ikadashi. Once there was a city called Champavati, which was ruled by the saintly king Mahishmati. He had four sons, the eldest of whom, Lumpaka, always engaged in very sinful activities, illicit sex with the wives of others, gambling and continual association with known prostitutes. His evil deeds gradually reduced the wealth of his father, King Mahishmati. Lumpaka also became very critical of the demigods and brahmanas and every day he would blaspheme the Vaishnavas. At last, King Mahishmati, seeing the condition of his son, exiled him to the forest. Out of fear of the king, even compassionate relatives did not come to Lumpaka's defense. So angry was the king and so sinful was Lumpaka. Bewildered in his exile, Lumpaka thought to himself, My father has sent me away and even my kinsmen do not raise any objection. What should I do now? He schemed sinfully and thought, I shall sneak back to the city under cover of darkness and plunder its wealth. During the day I shall stay in the forest and at night I'll return to the city. So thinking, Lumpaka entered the dark forest. He killed many animals by day and by night he stole valuable items from the city. The city dwellers apprehended him several times, but out of fear of the king they left him alone. They thought that it must have been the sins of his previous birth that had made him lose his royal facilities and act so sinfully. Though a meat-eater, Lumpaka would also eat fruits every day. He resided under an old banyan tree that happened to be very dear to Lord Vasudev. Indeed, many worshipped it as the god of all trees in the forest. In due course of time, while Lumpaka was doing so many sinful and condemnable activities, Safala Ikadashi arrived. On the eve of Ikadashi, Lumpaka had to pass the entire night without sleep because of the severe cold and his scanty bed clothes. The cold not only robbed him of all peace, but also almost killed him. By the time the sun rose, his teeth were chattering and he was almost comatose. And all during the morning of that Ikadashi day, he could not awaken from his stupor. When midday of Safala Ikadashi arrived, the sinful Lumpaka finally came to senses and managed to rise up from his place under the banyan tree. But with every step he stumbled to the ground. Like a lame man, he walked slowly and hesitantly, suffering greatly from hunger and thirst in the midst of the jungle. So weak was Lumpaka that he could not kill a single animal that day. Instead, he was reduced to collecting whatever fruits had fallen to the ground. By the time he returned to the banyan tree, the sun had set. Placing the fruits on the ground next to him, Lumpaka began to cry. Oh, woe is me! What should I do? Dear father, what is to become of me? Oh, Sri Hari, please be merciful to me and accept these fruits. Again, he was forced to lie awake the whole night without sleep. But in the meantime, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Madhusudana, had become pleased with Lumpaka's offering of the forest fruits, and he accepted them. Lumpaka had unwittingly observed a full Ikadashi fast, and by the merit he reaped on that day, he regained his kingdom with no further obstacles. Listen, O Yudhisthira, to what happened to the son of King Mahishmati when but a fragment of marriage sprouted up within his heart. As the sun rose beautifully on the day following Ikadashi, meaning the Dvadashi day, a handsome horse approached Lumpaka and stood next to him. 
At the same time, a voice suddenly spoke from out of the clear blue sky. This horse is for you, Lumpaka. Mount it and swiftly ride out to greet your family, O son of King Mahishmata. By the mercy of Lord Vasudev and the strength of the merit you acquired by observing Safala Ikadashi, your kingdom will be returned to you without any further hindrances. Such is the benefit you have gained by fasting on this auspicious day. Go now to your father and enjoy your rightful place in the dynasty. Upon hearing these celestial words, Lumpaka mounted the horse and rode back to the city of Champavati. By the merit he had accrued by fasting on Safala Ikadashi, he had become a handsome prince once more and was able to absorb his mind in the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari. In other words, he had become my pure devotee. Lumpaka offered his father, King Mahishmata, his humble obeisances and once more accepted his princely responsibilities. Seeing his son decorated with Vaishnava ornaments in Tilak, King Mahishmata gave him the kingdom and Lumpaka ruled unopposed for many, many years. Whenever Ikadashi came, he worshipped the Supreme Lord with great devotion, and by the mercy of Sri Krishna, he obtained a beautiful wife and a fine son. In old age, Lumpaka handed his kingdom over to his son, just as his own father, King Mahishmata, had handed it over to him, and then he went into the forest to serve the Supreme Lord with controlled mind and senses. Purified of all material desire, he left his body and returned home back to Godhead, attaining a place near the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. O Yudhisthira, one who approaches me, as Lumpaka did, will become completely free of lamentation and anxiety. Indeed, anyone who properly observes this glorious Safala Ikadashi, even if unknowingly, like Lumpaka, will become famous in this world. He will become perfectly liberated at death and return to Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. Of this there is no doubt. Moreover, one who simply hears the glories of Safala Ikadashi obtains the same merit derived by one who performs a Rajasuya Yagya and at the very least he goes to heaven in his next birth. So these are the glories of Safala Ikadashi, the history of Safala Ikadashi. Thank you very much for tuning in. May the Om Love be with you. Jai Shri Radhe Shyam.